Hi, welcome to uh, ESPN Crick Info. Uh, this is Sharda here, Sharda Ugra from uh, New Delhi, and uh, we are just here to uh, talk a little bit about a piece of breaking news that's that's taken place. Uh, this afternoon, the Pakistan Cricket Board announced uh, two sets of uh, bans on uh, uh, the umpires who were caught in the uh, spot in, in a sort of a, a sting operation done last year. Um, and Nadeem Gauri and uh, Asif Siddiq, Anis Siddiqui, uh, I beg your pardon, um, they've been, they've been uh, 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 banned by the PCB for, uh, for being a part of this uh, uh, sting operation. Uh, I'm here um, speaking to us from Karachi is uh, Crick Info's uh, regular contributor and a writer based in uh, Karachi, Saad Shafkat. Uh, Saad, hi! Welcome, welcome to uh, welcome to the ha to the hangout, and uh, let us know your first reactions to to the news uh, about about the banning on these two umpires for those uh, under those corruption charges. Uh, well, the the immediate reaction is they, that there's there's an unwelcome side to this, obviously, which is that uh, there's an exposure of dishonest umpires in the within the system, uh, Pakistani umpires. But I think there's also a welcome side to it, which is that uh, uh, culprits have been uh, snared and they've gone through a process uh, of uh, judgment and they've been uh, handed a punishment. So the more we identify dishonest people within the cricket system in Pakistan, um, the better the chances that we're going to start cleaning things up. Um, I just uh, sort of explained the, the, the two punishments that have happened. Uh, the news is up on the Click Info website at the moment, but for all of you uh, watching, Nadeem Gauri has been handed a four year ban, and uh, Anis Siddiqui was banned from all, you know, uh, a, a three year ban, which is from all uh, competitions or all assignments relating to, to, to PCB matches. Um, you know, one of the things that surprised me about this, uh, Saad, was the sort of the speed and the efficiency with which. Uh, the PCB has moved. The, the, the press release that came out was very detailed. Uh, it said that uh, the PCB had asked for the absolutely unedited uh, raw uh, version of the of the tapes that this Indian uh, TV channel had said that they had got on the two umpires uh, uh, having uh, discussions and, and get, basically getting stung by their uh, by, by their reporters. And that's how they went through this. The integrity committee went through it and so on. I mean, is this is this the, and and I think another thing we should we should uh, know is that there were there were three sets of umpires involved in this. Umpires from uh, Bangladesh, uh, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan. And the Bangladeshis have uh, had a, have a ten year ban on, on 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 the one umpire that they uh, 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 whose, whose name was Nadir Shah. Uh, historic in, in more ways than one for for people out here. Um, he had a ten year ban. And uh, the Sri Lankans haven't announced it, and, and the PCP has now come in with these two with these two uh, yeah. sort of penalties against uh, Nadim Gauri and uh, Anis Siddiqui. Uh, um, is it too much punishment? Too little punishment if you compare it to the to the ten year bans? I mean, I, the ten year bans seem sort of fairly severe, and the, uh, these seem sort of a little bit tempered down. Is that what you think? Uh, do you agree, sir? Well, the punishment seems appropriate to me, Sharda. I mean, uh, uh, as, as what I from what I understand of the sting. Uh, they had agreed to uh, do uh, to do something wrong. They had agreed to accept payments for favorable decisions. They hadn't actually gone ahead and, and committed the crime. But so so from that point of view, I think the punishment is um, appropriate. They uh, their intent was exposed. Uh, intent for wrongdoing was exposed. So I think that's fair. Uh, oh, could it have been harsher? I probably not. I don't think it should have been. But uh, the other uh, point you raised about the efficiency with which the PCB is acting, I I, I think that's a very important point. And uh, I, they, uh, for, uh, I mean, to one at one level, you might say that PCB comes under a lot of criticism. But under Zaka Ashraf, we've seen many things uh, uh, have had a very he's had a very commonsensical approach to a number of things. And uh, you might say that this uh, inquiry process uh, could be one of them. Uh, the other aspect, uh, as we were talking offline earlier, I think this is also sort of falling in line with what is happening in the country as a whole in Pakistan because. Uh, after a, a, a long period of dictatorships, you know, this is the first time that we've had a political government that's completed its term, and uh, the new set of ele a new election is on its way. General election is on its way. So there is a feeling whereby you know rule of law should prevail, and uh, 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 what matters is that uh, if there is wrongdoing, it has to be caught out. 
the media has proliferated quite a bit in the last decade or so in Pakistan. So it's very difficult to hide things now. And uh, in the election process, what's happening is that a number of candidates are undergoing uh, scrutiny, quote unquote, scrutiny by the election uh, uh, commission. And so just within that uh, whole uh, uh, wave, I think this uh, is sort of synchronized with that whole activity where people who've done wrong, they just can't hide anymore. Um. Uh, you know, uh, Saad, the other thing that I was, I, I read through this very detailed uh, 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 press release that came out from PCB and that they've given very specific reasons as to why Nadeem Ghori had a, a ban for four years and yes. uh, Anis Siddiqui was banned for three years. They said because Anis Siddiqui was, uh, you know, far less experienced an umpire, Nadeem Ghori was, uh, he, he stood in five test matches and 43 one-day internationals and he was on the, uh, he was elevated to uh, the international panel and the elite panel and so on. So he was one of those uh, umpires who had uh, who, who had been through this. Um, when you watch the sting operation, uh, whatever you saw of it on television in, in Pakistan, we also saw sort of a uh, one evening of really uh, watching these these little clips come uh, forth. When you saw it, uh, were you were you sort of what was your first reaction when you when you came across these um, you know this this sort of blurred television footage of this discussion that was going on? Well, you know, I mean, who, yeah, I mean, the, someone who just rushed past you at, at your house. I must, uh, I must also apologize to all the. No, no, uh, no, no, no problem. That, that's no, my no, wife. I, she wants to be a part of the action. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, if anyone is wondering why I've got a blue face on screen, it's because uh, I'm uh, sort of auditioning to to be the first female in the blue man group. And it's just <laughs> bad. Life. Just bad light based on where I where I'm sitting right. at the moment. Our connections have been up and down. No, 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 you look great. <laughs> we, uh, you haven't heard me sing. Um, we'll, we'll get back to this, that, uh, to the discussion about, you know, what was your first reaction when you saw the, when you yeah. saw all that green television television. You know, so, I mean, as far, uh, to be honest, I didn't catch much of the sting, but you know what I did catch uh, and which really uh, struck me was Nadim Ghori's initial reaction. So once the sting had been out, he was hounded by reporters. And again, this is, I would say, this is uh, one of the plus points of the media pro proliferation in Pakistan that, uh, you know, if, they, if, if something uh, controversial comes up, it explodes in the media and you get hounded until the truth is found. Uh, so he, his initial, when he was initially confronted by a gaggle of reporters, um, it struck me that he seemed quite defensive. He seemed quite unusually defensive. And uh, I mean, in retrospect, I guess one could say that he was defensive because he was guilty. But uh, it, it kind of, I mean, there the, were subtleties about he, he seemed to be averting his gaze. He seemed to be a, a little too insistent uh, and, uh, in, in proclaiming his innocence. And, you know, you could just, maybe you could, feel, you could hear a, qu a quivering of the voice. So that's really what struck me from that initial episode. As far as the sting itself is concerned, you know, we had that sting operation with the, um, the three spot fixers in the 2010 summer in England. Uh, so... Uh, I mean, we, we, we understand that corruption is something very difficult to prove. And it does take some very high quality uh, investigative reporting and, uh, you know, something that's uh, 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 very carefully thought out and done with a lot of investigative zeal and intelligence to bring out something like this. So in that respect, I would say this thing that was done by this Indian television channel is, is welcome because it's pointed out a flaw and until you identify all your flaws and try to fix them, you're not going to get anywhere. There's also been almost a plethora of these sting operations that are going on across, uh, you know, various uh, um, sort of institutions in, in India. And, and I think the, the, the television channel that's called uh, India TV, we should give them credit when it's due. Uh, they were trying to prove that this was IPL umpires that were doing it. They weren't able to establish that link, though the IPL is fully besmirched and whatever, all the rest of it. But they, they were able to point this out. Um, and just one final sort of point of discussion, uh, Saad, is, um, you know, how much of the excuse in, in cricket, all across cricket now, in, in no matter which country we are, we are talking about, uh, how much of the excuse that, oh, these are countries where people are not wealthy, you know, this is like the great suffering Asian subcontinent and this is why it happens. I mean, do you think that that is really the reason or there's something else that, that uh, you know, the, the greedy are guilty of? No matter what their bank accounts uh, read like. That's a, that's a great point, Sherda. You know, uh, you're absolutely right that once we had uh, the spot fixing scandal involving Asif and Amir and Salman, but uh, everybody uh, uh, I came across in Pakistan would would say, "Oh, Muhammad Amir, he was from such an underprivileged and a backward 
background and uh, oh you know he'd never seen so much money and so he became greedy but you know the fact is that some of the some of the world's most corrupt people are actually some of the wealthiest and some of the world's, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the, these dictators, I mean, though, you know, we've had so many in history. They're not unique to the third world. They're found everywhere. Uh, uh, dictators and, you know, people, I mean, people are going to jail even in, in the U.S. for corruption, really big, large-scale corruption. So I don't think it has to do with the fact that uh, people in our part of the world are uh, uh, poor. Mm -hmm. I think what it has to do with the uh, what it has to do with is, is that the rule of law in our societies is just not very rigorous, and what happens is that when the rule of law is lax, then people try to take shortcuts to make a quick buck, to get ahead, and bypass uh, uh, you know uh, bypass procedure, and many people in fact get away with it, and that's uh, what encourages others. So I think that's really what we're seeing in Pakistan cricket and wherever uh, corruption gets exposed in other developing nations that people think hey you know uh, uh, this, I, I've seen other people in a similar situation get away with it and I think I can too but the, uh, the fact that people are starting to get caught it's quite possible this is just the tip of the iceberg and the ones who do get caught are only a small fraction of the ones who are actually guilty but the fact that people are starting to get caught it's going to be there's no doubt it's going to be a deterrent for uh, anybody who's planning anything in the future. And I think, uh, you know, with, with the ICC stepping in and having this very sort of uh, fairly, fairly sort of switched on uh, anti-corruption code and uh, officers behind it, I mean, I don't think that you can ever sort of say cricket is completely clean, but at least it's, it's, it's got its eye, you know, it's, it, there's a watch on, you know, which is, which is probably a, a good sign. And I think the response of the PCB and the speed with which they have responded, like the Bangladesh board have done, uh, I think that's put pressure on uh, the Sri Lankans to now come up with some kind of a, um, uh, you know, an, an answer as to as to what is going to happen to uh, these umpires. There was a similar sting operation done with uh, a lot of first class cricketers, again, uh, you know, before this, uh, in the IPL, talking about something that they were willing to do, whether they did it or not, yeah. eventually was not, and they were banned and so on. Anyhow, it was... No, uh, uh, there's one more point, if I could make one. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, I just wanted to say that uh, we've seen, we've had uh, issues with cricket corruption and the ACSU that you've been referring to. It's mainly focused on international cricket, on the international game that takes place between nations at the test level, ODIs and so forth. But as you know, as all of us know, there's been so much rumor and talk about corruption in these Premier Leagues that have spr sprouted. There's been so much rumor, not just, uh, you know, with IPL, BPL, there was a lot of rumor, there were a lot of rumors, a lot of talk and innuendo. And I think that uh, uh, it's a good sign that in the Premier League arena now, we've had a sting operation that's led to punishments. Because, yes, there has been a deterrent in the test arena, but now this, uh, it, it, the fact that it's extending to this Premier, to the Premier League universe, I think that's also very positive. Excellent, excellent point, uh, Desad, that you said. Uh, we'll just sort of end our uh, end our uh, hangout here, and uh, thank you so much for joining us. It, it, it was it was great to hear your views and and uh, perspective from uh, Pakistan. And um, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, we'll be back the next time there is any breaking news. Thank you. Good night. Bye bye.